Hey, welcome back to this Wise in FMOD comparison video series. In this video, we're going to be creating a music system inside FMOD. We're going to be covering some very basic functionality and tailor the music to fit within our scene, which is our ice scene in the previous videos. So as you can see, this is where we left off. We have our ambience from last time and our footsteps that we've made. So to make some music, let's close these down and set up a new folder. And we'll call this music. And inside here, we'll create a 2D event. And we'll call this all music. OK, great. So rather than assign this to the master bank, we'll just quickly set up another bank just to be tidy. There we go, music bank. And that's that set up. So let's go back to our event and assign it to the music bank. There we go, perfect. So let's add some music to this. Add a few audio tracks, four we'll do for now. And the first track that we're going to drag in is just an ambience bed, if you will, and it sounds like this. If you remember our scene, it's, it's very cold and stark, so I've gone for a, a kind of open atmosphere. It is 126 BPM, so if you right click and add a tempo marker, you can change that. And it is 4 4. And you can change it to time or beats at the top, which will change the timeline grid. But we'll keep it on beats so we can snap it to a bar. And this loops at bar 33, so you can see there's a tail there. So rather than just looping and it's sounding like this. which cuts off without the tail. And I guess you could work around it just by copying the tail onto another track and putting it at the beginning. And it would sound a bit like this. OK, so there's, but there's actually a more efficient way. Is that if we set a destination marker, and we'll call this low action, and put this at the beginning, and now let's just delete that loop region and we'll add a transition to low action. So now at 33, it will transition back to our marker. But it still doesn't have the tail. So what we can do, if we just grab the tail by itself, open up the transition, and it comes up with its own transition timeline in here. And if we just make that a little bit smaller and move over our tail into this transition timeline. Copy and paste, delete that. Let's make this a bit smaller again. Now drag the beginning of what it's going to loop to into this transition timeline. And now you'll notice if we move the tail up, smooth transition and back to the beginning. Let's hear that again. much smoother. And you notice the playhead become visible at the beginning after it's gone through the transition. OK, so that's, that's pretty cool. Let's drag in another piece of audio. And these also have tails, so we'll just fade that in like that. And we'll add this tail to the transition as well. If we just copy that. Grab that tail by itself. and drag the beginning into the transition, and up goes the tail. Beautiful. Oh, there we go. Get rid of that. Check that works. OK. Oh, that didn't work. Hold on. There it is. All right, cool. So let, well, tell you, let's leave that playing. And the next track we're going to drag in is going to be a tension stem. So we'll pop that in, and you can hear that playing now. Copy it over. These are all vertically layered stems at this section. And it's a little bit quiet. So we want this to be able to fade in and out at certain points in the scene. So when you go through a trigger box, it will start to fade in the tension. So let's add some automation to the volume and go to a parameter. Add new parameter. Uh, and we'll call this, we'll call it tension. Then click in the automation field 
and we'll go up to five when it's on full blast because it was quite quiet. And we'll change the curve slightly. And now, ah, you notice that cut off, that cut off then at the end, and that is because we haven't put the beginning into the transition. So let's go ahead and do that. There it is. Now it should be smoother. There you go. It's in the transition and it's back at the beginning. Great. So this tension parameter, it's not very smooth at the moment. However, if you just click twice on the parameter tab and you can change the seek speed at the bottom. So now when we change it, it will change at the speed that we put in at the bottom. Which is pretty cool. All right, so that's the parameter for tension. Let's drag in some random stings as a multi. And these will obviously be selected at random. Just adds a little bit of variation to the to the score. Let's bring that down a little bit, it's a bit loud. Okay, let's go do a little bit of housekeeping and rename some of these. We call this Atmos Bed. And this one is Atmos Alternative. And Tension. And these are random stings. Okay, fantastic. Let's add a new audio track. And we're going to have another parameter for this one, which will be chimes. This is a chimes loop. And this will be used when we get to the C. We'll add a trigger box and all of the music will duck out. And we'll just go into some nice tinkly bells and chimes. So that's a seamless loop. Let's just play that. And let's add a parameter. And we'll call this chimes. Great. Okay, so when we turn up the chimes parameter, we want the chimes to turn up. Up to minus 3.5. Adjust the curve slightly. Four, four will do. And then we also want the others to turn down as we turn the chimes up. So let's change the automation for tension, which will go from its current setting to lower. That's at 5 dB. Change the curve. So now when the chimes come in, tension will fade out. It's pretty simple automation. So now we need to do the same for all of the other instruments as well. We'll start off with the random stings. Leave the curve as it is, just to go through a bit quicker. Same for Atmos Alt. And we'll do the same for the Atmos bed. So now, as you get to the sea, it should sound quite magical, quite majestic. That obviously needs to be a little bit slower, a bit like tension. So we'll go ahead and do that. Around 0.2. I think that sounds quite nice. But a little bit quiet, if anything. So let's just turn that up very slightly. Sounds good. So that's covered some of the basics with vertical layering and transition functionality. But there's another way we could actually transition. So if you had a track that had a completely different tempo, perhaps, or a completely different feel to it, we could transition into that by creating a brand new region. And we wanna, we're going to transition to this destination 
which in this case we'll call medium action. And we'll put that at the beginning of that loop. And we'll make a transition region this time. Because at any point during this region, we want to go back to low action. So set it to low action. And we'll set a transition region for the low action to go to medium action. Right click medium action. Now we don't want it to happen immediately because it will sound a bit jarring. So we'll go down and set it to every two bars. And we'll do the same for this. So as soon as it gets to that point on the grid, it will transition to the either medium or low. But you'll see each of these transition regions are going to happen 100% of the time at the moment. So we need to set a couple of parameters on each of these just so it will transition at a certain time triggered through the game, obviously. So we'll call this one action state. And that's added the parameter at the top right. And we want this to happen when that parameter is set between roughly 0.5 and 1. There we go. Exactly 0.5. OK, so we'll do the opposite for back to low action. Choose the action state. And this parameter will be there. So let's give it a go and see how this sounds. Let's see if it works. Press play. Turn up the action state. And it's moved over. We're going to need to do something to make that sound slightly better. That has absolutely no fades. So let's go ahead and copy some of these over to the low action loop. Just for this instance, this could be something completely different. But we'll just do this for this example. Add a new audio track, and we'll call this Action Drums. Action Drums, there we go. And drag in the audio. And we'll just quickly make this loop. the entire length of this loop. There we go. So let's test and see if the functionality of this parameter works. There we go, transition's over, let's see if it goes back. Yes, it does. So let's deal with this fade issue. That sounds incredibly jarring. So let's open up the transition window, make it a reasonable size. OK, now if we just drag the ends of the previous of the low action state into the transition, and then we will fade in the action drums inside here. This could be a sting, this could be anything you like, just to blend the two action states together. Let's see how that sounds. OK, that fades a little bit too early. Let's move that to the right slightly. OK, let's see how that sounds. We can turn the parameter up. Didn't sound quite right. Let's try dragging that in too. OK, that worked. Obviously, that's very basic, but that, that works quite nicely. So let's do the same for the other direction. Let's open the transition timeline and adjust it to size. And in this case, we'll drag the beginnings of low action into this transition. And we'll move the sting in there as well. And we'll fade out the drums. There we go. Let's see how that sounds. That sounds pretty good. Obviously, this could have all been achieved just vertically layering it, but just as an example, 
I thought I'd show you that today. And there you go, you can see it works. Let's go back to low. And these could be different sections in the same in the same track. They could be verse and chorus, and you could transition between the two, or at any point. It's quite effective and quite visual and intuitive. Let's let you listen for a minute. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up this video. We've created a very basic music system with an FMOD and covered some of the functionality involved. This has barely scratched the surface with what's possible in FMOD. And in the next project I do, I'm going to be creating an entire music system within this piece of software specifically, so we can really push the boundaries of what's possible. I've got three videos I can link you to off the back of this. One is the WISE comparison video, where we create a music system within WISE. The second video is an evaluation of this entire comparison video series where I'll give you my view on how FMOD and WISE compare, which one I prefer, and where I see the future going for each of them. And the third video is a bit of a curveball, and it's going to be covering Elias. It's an amazing piece of software that's really caught my attention recently. As a composer, it looks really creative, and I can't wait to get stuck into it. So we'll just talk about that very briefly, and I'll see if I can get you guys interested, if you haven't seen it already. All right, see you in the next video. Cheers.